Classic Tales, Arabian Nights, The Merchant and the Genie. Once upon a time, in a land woven with the threads of magic and ancient lore, a prosperous merchant embarked on a journey to trade his valuable goods. His travels brought him to a serene garden nestled in a verdant valley. There, he decided to rest and refresh himself. As he sat beneath a walnut tree by a clear spring, he ate his lunch and tossed the pits of the dates he consumed onto the lush grass. Suddenly, a fearsome genie appeared before him with a sword drawn, his face twisted with rage. The genie declared that he intended to kill the merchant to avenge the death of his son, whom the merchant had unknowingly killed. The merchant was bewildered, for he could not recall ever harming anyone. The genie explained that one of the date pits the merchant had thrown had struck his son in the eye, killing him instantly. Terrified, the merchant pleaded for his life, begging the genie for a chance to bid his family farewell and ensure they would be cared for. His heartfelt pleas were interrupted by the arrival of dawn, and the scene shifted back to the chamber of Scheherazade. Scheherazade, seeing the light creeping through the curtains and knowing the hour of her potential execution was near, paused her story at this cliffhanger. Her sister Dunyazad, completely absorbed, praised the tale and expressed her eagerness to hear what would happen next. Shasharazad then turned to Sultan Shariar and said, if the Sultan would allow me to live another day, you would hear how the merchant's pleas moved the genie. Sultan Shariar, intrigued and not ready to lose such captivating entertainment, silently agreed. He rose to attend his council, leaving without giving the command to execute Shasharazad, much to the relief of their father, the Grand Vizier. The next night, Shasharazad continued her tale. The genie, moved by the merchant's pleas and a moment of reflection, decided to grant the merchant one year to settle his affairs on the condition that he must return to the same spot, ready to face his fate. As the year passed, the merchant diligently arranged his affairs and prepared his family for his absence. True to his word, he returned to the garden to meet the genie, ready to accept whatever might come. As the merchant waited in the garden, resigned to his fate, an old man approached him leading a deer by a leash. Seeing the merchant in such a somber state, the old man inquired about his circumstances. The merchant recounted his story, explaining the agreement with the genie and the reason for his return to the garden. Moved by the merchant's tale, the old man decided to stay and keep him company, waiting to see what would unfold. Not long after, a second old man arrived, this time accompanied by two black dogs. He too asked about the gathering under the tree. Upon hearing the merchant's plight and the first old man's decision to stay, he too decided to join them, intrigued by the story and eager to witness the outcome. Finally, a third old man appeared. He approached, curious about the unusual assembly, he listened intently as the merchant repeated his tale for the third time. Finding himself drawn into the narrative, the third old man chose to stay as well, adding his quiet support to the group that awaited the genie's return. As the tension mounted, the genie suddenly materialized, his anger undiminished, ready to exact his vengeance. Just as he was about to strike, the first old man stepped forward. He proposed a deal to the genie. He would tell a tale so extraordinary that if it proved as compelling as the merchant's situation, the genie should consider granting the merchant his life. Intrigued but skeptical, the genie agreed to listen, 
his sword still poised as the first old man cleared his throat to begin his tale.